Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about something that multiple people have asked me to talk about over the course of three years, which I haven't really gone into depth yet. I'm not really sure why I've been putting it off. It's just something I haven't really gotten around to yet. If you don't know who I am, I am a body posse influencer and I have been for almost three years ever since I was 18. I'm about to turn 21 in May. It's two months away. I'm very excited. I don't think I've gone into depth about my journey and even the mindset that I was really in when I started. It has been an interesting journey and I wasn't always as confident and I know that seems far-fetched because I kind of went from zero to a hundred, which is insane, but I'm gonna start with, you know, my background and how I even started social media. My journey with social media has been a long time in the making. I made an Instagram when I was 12 and my first Instagram username was confidentmodel21 because I knew that I wanted to be a model or even work in social media because when I was 12, I believe I really wanted to be known on social media. And that didn't really come to fruition until I was 17. So when I was 17, I decided, um, that's when I moved to Houston, that I was going to really try again because I'm in a new city and there's no one around me that really knows me that can judge me or whatever. So I just decided I was going to do it. I did not like myself. I mean, I'm 17. I am plus sized and that's not really, you know, what people perceived as beautiful or sexy and whatever, even though it is, but I hated myself. It got to the point where I actually dropped out of high school because, um, and this isn't the main reason, but I had so much debilitating anxiety about being seen and being around people and just people looking at me. I had severe body dysmorphia, like I hated going outside. It was really terribly bad and I decided like I'm just gonna drop out of high school so I don't have to be seen and that is when social media literally became like my rock like it's all I did very unhealthy relationship with social media at that point but it did give me something to do and something to look forward to my social media like personality at that point was <laughs> hating myself basically um, all I could post about was, oh, no one's ever gonna love me, I hate my body, like, I wish I looked different, and, you know, people do resonate with that, so it did get me a following of people who also resonated with that message, even though it was a negative one. I would just study these other, like, e-girlies and, like, what they were dressing as and what they were posting and follow the people that they were following so they would follow me back and I could just, like, start gaining this following on social media. At that point, I think I had around like 13,000 followers when I was 17 on Twitter. Instagram like wasn't a thing for me, it was just purely Twitter. So Twitter is where I started. And when I turned 18, still terrible confidence. The thing that did it was one DM and some girl DM'd me and this could be seen as like a backhanded compliment. I don't see it that way now and I didn't see it that way then. To other people this might be one, but she said, um, seeing you post your body, you know, makes me feel better about mine. We have the same body and to see you so beautiful, like, it makes me really happy. And at that point, I really didn't post my body all that much. And when I did, I would pick it apart. So to me, that was a shock. I was like, wow. And then, you know, I kind of had an epiphany after that, which was, how is she, you know, going to think when she scrolls through the rest of my Twitter and sees me, like, basically bashing the same body that she has because all I did was talk about about my body. How would I feel if someone with my body who I kind of look up to and I think is beautiful, you know, blatantly like tears it down and thinks it's disgusting, like the most disgusting thing they've ever seen, and they say that verbatim? That would make me feel very good. I kind of decided I would try something different and something new. You know, my friend took these pictures of me that I thought were okay, I guess, so I posted them, and instead of saying something negative, I was just like, you know, I don't always feel good about my body, but these pictures make me feel really beautiful, and it went viral, so that is the very first thing that ever went viral for me, was when I decided that I wasn't going to be negative about my body, and I was going to try to uplift it so other people could feel better about theirs as well, and that's just kind of when I knew that this is what I was supposed to do. Um, I unfortunately don't have 
a screenshot of those pictures anymore. I think shortly after it went viral, I really could not handle any sort of negative comments, so I deleted it, obviously. You know, that was like a really big turning point for me because I knew that I had found like my niche, basically. So I really want to go through the steps and thinking back like what I did to kind of get to this point because it took a long time to get to where I am now. So after that blew up, I did not feel good about myself still, and I knew I wasn't going to. And at that point, it was just kind of a formula because I knew I wanted to be in social media and this was uplifting of other people, so if it was uplifting other people, I was just going to keep doing it, even if I didn't believe it. So that leads me to our first step, which is to fake it until you make it. I would just post, you know, positive things about my body even if I didn't believe them. I was lying out of my teeth. I did not believe those things. At all. I... <laughs> And I thought people would see right through that, but the thing about confidence is that most people are faking it. If you present yourself as confident, other people are going to see it that way. So that's what I learned almost instantly, and I just kept doing that. I kind of came to the conclusion that I have force-fed myself all of these, you know, negative ways of thinking. I have convinced myself that I'm ugly, that... I'm disgusting and that being fat is gross and that I need to be skinny and I need to look like, you know, any other model that I saw online. And I knew because I had so easily convinced myself of those negative things over a course of time just by telling myself them that I could do the exact opposite by telling myself positive things, by telling myself that I am beautiful and I don't need to look like anyone else and I love my body. If you are constantly feeding yourself negativity, that is what your brain is going to live off. You're going to feel like you're lying to yourself for however long it takes. You eventually will believe that the words you're telling yourself are true because they are true, the positive ones. When you present yourself that way, you have a social proof from other people because if you present yourself as confident and beautiful and sexy and other people can see that, their belief of that is going to be reflected back onto you. I don't know how else to phrase that. I really hope it makes sense. And what I mean is, when I was posting that I was confident and I was beautiful, that I loved myself, and seeing other people reaffirm that by saying, yes, you should love yourself, you're gorgeous, you're sexy, you know, I want to be like you, I want to be confident. Seeing that only motivated me to tell myself these things more so it's really important that you spread positivity because it will be reflected back onto you and it will only make it easier to believe the lies that you're telling yourself. Another thing I did was I kind of had another epiphany when I was speaking to one of my friends and she was talking really bad about herself and I was comforting her. In my mind, I was like, why can't I do this to myself? Because what if that was me? What would I say? And I would just keep feeding into those things. The main thing I did was talking to myself as a friend. So, for example, one of my friends is speaking to me and she's telling me that she looks ugly and she hates how she looks today. And I love my friends and I'm not gonna be like, yeah, you're right. You look disgusting and I hate your body today. You just wouldn't do that because you love your friends and you want to comfort them. So, you would be like, no, I think you're gorgeous and you look great today. So why can't you do that for yourself? People will say, you know, just don't have negative thoughts or they don't really have a constructive way of dealing with them. And this is like the best thing I've found that helps with literally any scenario. We've normalized being, you know, absolute monsters to ourselves, And we have to remember that we wouldn't talk to anyone else the way that we speak to ourselves. So why are we? That doesn't mean that you're not going to have negative thoughts, because you are. You're going to have them for the rest of your life, and that's just how it is. Having things displayed in the media that tell you your body isn't good enough, and you should look different, or you should change this, that's going to stay with you, because unfortunately that is how society is, and trends will keep changing, and, you know, a feature of yours will be in or out, or a feature you don't have will be in, and you don't have it. So we just have to remind ourselves to be kind. The third thing I did that really, really helped me, and I don't need to do it as much anymore, but I know it, it, it definitely helped me when 
I was just getting started with my body positivity journey, and that is taking days off from perceiving myself. Your worth should not come from how you look on a day-to-day -day basis. I'll just use me as an example. I would wake up one day and look at myself and just know this is not a good body positivity day. I am just going to tear myself down. Nothing I wear is going to look good. My makeup is not going to look good. It's not going to make me feel better. So I'm not going to force myself to do those things to try to make myself feel better. And I'm not going to take pictures. I'm not going to look at any mirrors. I am going to put on clothes that make me feel cozy. You know, maybe a really big t-shirt so I don't even have to think about what I look like because it's not important. And I'm going to do things that make me happy. I'm going to watch a movie. I'm gonna play the piano, I'm gonna paint something, you know, anything that takes your mind off from how you look. Because we have to remember that even though most of what I preach is body positivity, body neutrality is also very important and can, they can go hand in hand. I don't think it's like a, a body positivity versus a body neutrality type of thing. People will praise one and, you know, bring down the other and say, you know, you should just practice body neutrality. And you know, whatever works for person to person, but I honestly think that they're very important when used together because it's important to remember that as a society, what you look like will always be the first thing that someone notices and you're always going to have that in your head. It's very unrealistic to think you're never going to care about what you look like or think that other people aren't going to care about what you look like because that is just the reality. Incorporating both can be very useful. I have to remind myself that ultimately, what I look like does not matter, and it really does not determine my worth or my beauty, and it's okay to take days off. You don't have to be perceived all the time, and you don't have to force yourself to go out in an outfit that you know you're just going to pick yourself apart in, because that's just the truth. Don't make yourself feel worse. If you know what's going to make you feel worse, don't do it, and that's okay. I obviously use it in moderation. You don't want it to be like dropping out of high school because you don't want to be seen by anyone. That's not what I mean. It's knowing on days that you can function and do things that make you happy without caring about what you look like. So that's an important one to me. The next one is arguably one of the hardest, which is knowing that you not looking like other people is what makes you powerful, which can be very hard because when you're brought up in a society where there is media that's showing you what you should look like or the features that are in right now and you don't look like that, looking different can make you feel worse. I say this is the hardest one because it really is because this is something that we're always going to have to deal with is our bodies being trends or our features being trends and it's ever-changing. One body is not always going to be in or one specific look is not always going to be in and we have to remind ourselves that that is okay if we don't change with those because this is just media and it doesn't make you less than. And the fact that you look different is what makes you beautiful because that means that no one else can find that beauty in someone else because that's you and that is the beauty that you offer. I especially still deal with this one and this is why I say it's the hardest for me personally because as a model and as a social media influencer, I am surrounded by these trends and, you know, these other beautiful people who don't look like me and I don't look like them. It's especially hard when everyone's looking at you and nitpicking your body. I started social media as a plus-sized person and I was objectively fat, and I don't say fat is a bad word, it's just a describing word, but I was. People had a lot of an easier time understanding why I was a body positivity influencer and there was no question. It's like, oh yeah, she's fat. She's a body positivity influencer. And the words she is saying make sense. So now that I've lost weight, um, without trying, might I add, people, some people think that I really don't have a voice in this space anymore because I do not look the same as I used to. And that was kind of hard to come to terms with because like for a, a long while I really didn't talk about anything body positivity related because I knew it kind of wouldn't be received well by like some people and those people don't really matter and I look different than I did 
and that's okay. And I've had to come to terms with that. It doesn't mean that my voice is diminished. It doesn't mean that the experiences and the literal trauma that I had to deal with because I was fat went away. And I still deal with, you know, body shaming and stuff like that. And you have to remember you're not always going to make everyone happy. Another thing to remember in your body confidence journey, now that we've kind of gone through at least, you know, the main things that I did, is your confidence journey is not linear. This is also like a really hard hurdle to get over because you have to remind yourself that one bad day does not diminish all of the hard work you've put in or get rid of all of the good days that you've had. It could take, you know, two months to see any change, six months, a year, two years. For me, it was like a year and a half before I really felt like, oh wow, I can look back and I feel like everything is different and I'm in a completely different mindset and I feel better. You can't get discouraged because it doesn't happen overnight. You can't just flip a switch and everything's good. I mean, maybe some people can and I'm jealous of those people, but you're always gonna have bad days. But the point is that you're trying Hopefully the good days outweigh the bad and that's the goal to let the good days outweigh the bad and Know that on your worst days confidence wise that You know you can pull yourself out of it because you've done it before and it will pass and That you're capable of correcting these thoughts. I still have really bad days where I feel like I'm not doing enough. If I look different, then my career would be better and I'd have more followers and I'd be making more money or I'd, you know, have the acting career that I want. Or if I never lost weight, like, would I be better off? And these are all horrible thoughts to have because they're purely based off of other people's opinions and how I think other people are perceiving me. But on those days, I remind myself of how far I've come and it will pass and it's just a bad day. You're gonna feel like nothing has changed and then one day you're gonna wake up and look back and be like, oh, wow, I've really come a long way and I promise you that's gonna happen. You just have to be persistent and be patient with yourself and be kind and loving and don't get discouraged. Knowing that you're doing your best to correct yourself is enough. I promise you it's enough. Knowing that you're trying is still enough. You have like an entire week in a row that's bad, but you're still trying. You're st that means you're still growing. And that means you have grown. Know that I'm proud of you. And I, I truly am. And I truly mean that. Everyone who messages me and tells me that I've helped them or them following me has given them a lot of more confidence. Like that truly does like mean a lot to me. And it truly does make me really happy. Um, and I don't just say that because I truly am grateful for this platform and that you guys have kept me relevant for almost three years. I do believe in you because I know how low I was and I don't even know if you can go any lower in terms of body positivity and to not to get dark, but I, I genuinely wanted to end my life because I could not believe I looked the way I did. I said, why, why me? Why do I have to look like this? Why was I born looking like this? Why couldn't I have been born any way else? Which is shocking to think because I look at myself, I'm like, I'm literally so beautiful. What was I thinking? So I know if I can come from that, so can you. Well, I hope you're not down that low, but if you are, I know you can get out of it. So yeah, I don't know. That's like so sappy, sorry. But I, I love you guys and I, Hope that these tips help, and if you have more specific questions, please DM me or leave them below, and I'd love to make another video, like, expanding even more. All of my social media links are in the description, so please go follow me there if you want more body positivity content or just random content, whatever. Alright, bye guys, I love you.